after you all hearing for the last couple of talks about not focusing on data too much, I have to tell you that we're about to focus on data a little bit. So <laughs> anyway, we'll we'll press forward because we're still uh, we you know it's still something that's an important integral part of the program as well. Um, so what I'm going to look at more is the day to day um, nuts and bolts part of your program. So our aim is to assist hand hygiene leads to manage their program and this means listening to your feedback and implementing changes in our systems to help facilitate that. So one of the issues that we've been working on is fixing the flexibility of roles in our hand hygiene compliance database HICAP. So in our current system some roles impact on the functionality of other roles. In other words some roles don't play nicely together. So for example, in the past, if an auditor was allocated um, a nurse unit manager role to run some reports, the auditor role overrode the num role, preventing reports from being run. So many users have provided feedback that sometimes um, auditors do need to run reports for their own departments. To address this, HICAP is about to undergo a restructure of the roles, which will be released in the next few weeks. So with the restructure, assigning roles will be much more flexible and tailored to what each user needs. The restructure will provide more flexibility for users with multiple roles and allow um, roles to be added and removed easily from the user profile page and provide a more streamlined process for adding new users to the system. And we think this will be a game changer for HICAP users. So there will be four main role types that will be in um, HICAP once the restructure takes place. So the administrator role, which um, most of you will be familiar with because you'll be organisation administrators, will be largely unchanged and will still be able to do all the same things that it's always done, reporting, adding users, um, managing departments, all those kinds of things. The auditor role um, is also essentially unchanged. If you're an auditor, you still audit as before. The difference now is that you will be able to um, uh, add an auditor, uh, not just at an organisation level, but it also at a department level. So if an auditor is uh, only needing to audit at one department, they can simply be added at that level. The data entry role. Um, the data entry role is um, going to be uh, a little different in that it was previously um, the department administrator role. All that role will be able to do is uh, enter data. The difference is that previously it could only be uh, added at the department level, whereas with the changes it will be able to be um, uh, allocated at the organisation level as well. So if you have someone at the organisation level that just needs to add data, then uh, they will be able to be given that role. And fourthly, we'll have the reporter role. So um, that essentially takes over from what was the nurse, nurse unit manager role. And that's the role um, that uh, was previously just able to run reports at the department level only. But with the changes, this role will be a reporter either at department, organisation, or region, right up to jurisdiction level. So if you have someone that's, say, in a quality um, type position, they don't need to manage anything in the database, they just need to run reports, they can have that uh, reporter role at uh, whatever level that they need it. So the roles will be able to be flexibly allocated at different levels. So once um, the, this, the changes take effect, you'll be able to see all of your users on the one page. So previously those uh, people who have uh, department administrators and NUMS will know that they had to flick into the department tab to, to find those users. So you'll just now be able to look on the one page, click on the down arrow and you'll be able to see who was allocated at that role. So roles will be able to be added or directly uh, removed directly from the user's profile page. So this differs to previously where you had to go to the organisation page to add or uh, detach users. So you open up that uh, uh, user page, click the assign roles button 
And then you'll get a page where you um, allocate what role you want that person to have. So in this um, example, this person's being allocated as an auditor. And then you need to add at, uh, to what organisation or department, or if it's only a department, then you, then you add that as well. And then you click assign roles. So they'll be added that way. Um, you can then go back and add another role for that person if you want. So you can see in this example, this person is an auditor for the whole hospital um, and a reporter just for one department. If they need a further role, you click assign roles again. If you need to um, remove them from those roles, again, you do it from the profile page, you click on uh, one of these um, buttons at the side and then click remove selected and they will be taken off that role. So very easy from one page, you can allocate or take off a number of roles. So for someone that has multiple roles, um, they will be able to toggle between those roles by clicking on the role button that will appear at the top of the page. Um, for this example, um, the, this uh, person is, is currently attached or looking at their, their auditor uh, role. Uh, by clicking on that, you'll see what other roles there are they have attached and you can then click on that other role. Um, so as an auditor, that person would see this page for um, the organisation and then when you click on the um, toggle to the other role that, that they have, they would then see this page uh, for the one department that they are a reporter for. So it just gives that flexibility um, there's a, you know, and there's a number of combinations that um, people will have depending on what their needs are. So for example, someone might just need to be uh, a reporter for an organisation if they're from a, a quality um, department or something like that. Um, they might also be oops, um, uh, an auditor at one organisation and an org admin at a different organisation. Again, that will be able to be set up on their profile and they'll get only the access they need for each of those roles at the correct places. Um, another example is where you have someone who might be a region group administrator um, and an organisation group administrator. Now this happens in some circumstances where um, you might have um, someone who has a reporting line such as mental health that might cut across that region group, uh, that region group administration level and it will just allow um, reports to be run in a different way for those people. So there will be some people who that applies to, maybe not so many, but um, it will be uh, very important for those people. So in addition um, to these, the restructure of roles in HICAP, we have been um, tidying up a lot of the users that are currently in HICAP. So there is an automatic removal um, of users in HICAP following periods of inactivity. So if uh, an auditor has not collected data in a couple of years, um, they will be detached from their organisation. So to be reattached, they will need to undergo a lapsed order to pathway because it's no data in two years, it means they're not current anymore. Um, if they have a reporter or a data entry role and haven't logged in in over a year, they will also be, their, their logins will be deleted. There will be no data against their names. Um, we don't delete any, anyone who has data against their names. Um, so they'll just be deleted, but again, they can be reinstated if they're needed and you, know, you need to contact us if, if someone's been deleted and, and the login's still needed. We've also been going through um, contacting organisations to ensure that uh, their auditors are validated and that their contact details are updated. So some of you will have been through that process already to make sure that who's in, the people in HICAP should be and they're, they're um, currently validated and able to add data. And we've been removing generic logins for some time. There's probably still a few floating around that we're, we're aiming to move. So another new thing that we have in HICAP, um, not released yet, but also very, very shortly, uh, will be some new reports. And we'll just, I'll just go through those briefly as well. So on the reporting page, if you're an administrator, you'll see down here two new extra reports, um, export CSV line data and required moments. 
So the CSV line data uh, will, will be, or is every moment, it's, it's the raw data essentially, it's uh, every moment line by line um, with all the details there. To run the CSV line data, you click on that link and then you just select your filters and also check with any reports that you run where an email address is required that it's correct because that's where the report's going to go to. And when you run the CSV line data, this is what it'll look like. So you'll just get every moment line by line. You notice to the last column in that report um, is input source and it will show you um, how the data was entered. So this data here was entered via a mobile device. If the data was entered, collected on paper and then entered on the PC, it will say web on the side. So if you want to know the proportion of, of your data that was entered on a mobile device, you just simply need to filter the column once you've run the report. So this report will be great for people who have um, local databases and local reporting functionality where they want to, to run various things at their uh, organisation. They will have access when the new reports come available to run that whenever th uh, they need to do that. The other report is the required moments report. Um, this is a, a summary line of data for every organisation. So if you have a number, if you're a region administrator and you have a number of organisations, you'll see a line for each one of those. The, there's one column here that shows required moments, as in how much data you're required to submit according to the details that we have in HICAP. And the last column is the difference, as in how much excess data was collected for that period of time. So you'd be able to see very clearly and quickly um, how much data you, you needed to collect and how much data above that was collected. So the zero report um, is not something I can show you yet because that's still in development, but what it is is a feature that will be added to all current reports and it'll just be a checkbox that you'll be able to, to tick if you want to use that feature. So if you um, check that zero reports box, what you'll get then is uh, a report that includes um, uh, either departments or auditors or whatever it is you're running a report for that did not submit any or do not have any data against it. So if you were running a department report for the last 12 months and you want to make sure all of your departments submitted data, um, you can run that report, check the box and you'll get zeros against the departments that did not have any data against them in that previous 12 months. Again, you'll be able to run that for the auditor in sessions. You'll be able to see any of your auditors who have not collected any data, say, in the last 12 months. So very handy for validation purposes. Um, so the next new thing that we have to show you will be um, the national data page. So when the national data is released um, next week, next couple of weeks, you will see the data as this new interactive page. Um, by audit period, then will there will be a summary across the top that shows you the compliance, and then there will be a series of um, graphs underneath breaking the data down. So all you need to do to see the actual data is to click on any one of these graphs to see the data table underneath. So we think that's you know, kind of nice, a nice change from what you've probably been looking at for some time. Um, another change that's in uh, HICAP or related to HICAP is to do with um, departments. So we have um, an de emergency department definition uh, which has come about after we've gone and reviewed all the departments in HICAP that had emergency department um, as, their, as their department type. Those that did not meet this definition have been moved over into a new department called emergency services. So things like urgent care um, that don't have you know, full-time uh, emergency department type resources. The other change is uh, the radiology department type is now called radiology slash radiation oncology. So that now includes radiation oncology if you have uh, any of that if you have a department that's, um, that fits that definition. 
Um, some of them will be moved over, but if you have them and you, need, you just maybe have a look and you can flick them over yourselves. So we have more new offerings for this year. Um, online learning modules. Um, this has been released and is now available. There's a hand hygiene renal dialysis module. Uh, so this has specific information re related to this type of um, uh, work that people do. So this page is just sort of showing hand hygiene uh, related to connection, um, cannulation and connection, for example. Another module on its way, uh, will be released very soon as well, is the dental module. So that will be um, uh, exciting to have that as another option for, for people to be used as their, part of their education. Um, we also have some updated guidance documents. Uh, you'll notice that the, on the website, blood collection and dialysis documents have also been updated as well. So a lot of consultation has gone into to sorting those out. So I suppose in conclusion, it's just really, um, we'd like to thank all the, you know, everyone for providing the feedback that they've provided to us. Um, Keep it coming because this is how we develop things. This this is how we, you know, understand what the users, what, what you the users need. Um, in regards to the, the learning modules, I just want to give a, a special um, thank you out there to Carolyn Chenoweth, who uh, for all the hard work that she put into um, the the renal module, um, and for the dental module, another thank you to Kylie Robb and ADA New South Wales and the Dental Working Party for their contributions with the, the dental module as well. Um, and lastly, for the blood collection guidelines, um, the Pathwest team, at jurisdictional representatives and some private pathology staff, because we, we, we do value and we need these contributions um, to help develop these resources. So uh, they wouldn't be available if we didn't have these people helping us and um, providing their, their expertise in these areas. Um, so if you have ideas, Please contact us, let us know, we'd love to hear from everyone. So that's all we have to show you this year, so thank you very much everyone.